right, welcome back to this section. We've covered a lot of the course already. We've still got a couple a little more things I want to talk about. Uh, mainly, I want to talk about the process of the auction. So let's get to it. All right, so let's deal now with the actual process of how you would convince your client that the auction should take place and what kind of proposal are you going to present. So if we use that two thirds method that we just talked about, and we have determined that this property is probably pretty good for auction, then we probably need to take care of our client and suggest that maybe this property is good for auction. And the way that you would do that obviously is literally doing what you did to convince you is show him this two thirds concept and say, hey, look, you know, the property fits in here. Uh, you as a seller fit in here and the market may fit in here. So in your particular case, we may have three of these scenarios lining up that would allow this to make it a good marketable auction property. OK, and whatever one of those that fit would be the one that you would obviously key in on. Hey, like it's, you know, it's a vacant home. You've got high carrying costs. You're a motivated seller that needs income. It's a relatively unique property that's got a very diverse group of buyers that could come to it. So those are the three elements that I think would make it good. Well, those elements that make it good would be also the elements that you would obviously use as the uh, marketing point for that purpose, okay? So there's a couple other things that we could use to do that. And I can't seem to find them. There they are. Uh, now, in a market or in a auction that happens, there actually will be a purchase agreement. Now, that purchase agreement is typically signed by the winner of the auction before they leave the auction site. Okay? So they will enter into a purchase agreement, the typical purchase agreement that a buyer would use at the auction. Now, in that pre-auction package that buyers all got when they register and that you have obviously previewed, it's going to have all of the rules regarding the, pre, uh, the pre-listing title work that you may have, where you're going to close. Uh, you're going to have maybe an inspection results in there. Uh, you're going to talk about the financing. Uh, any of these uh, items that would be in our purchase agreement you would have to all be posted as part of the auction for all the bidders to understand. Now, I recently went to an auction here in Nashville, Indiana, where all of this was laid out prior to us even coming to the auction. And matter of fact, all of these instructions were actually given to us like a month in advance. We knew the financing we could use. We knew the process of how they were going to bid. <laughs> we knew the requirements of the buyers. And all of these things were uh, as part of what the auctioneer is going to do to help make this auction successful. We were told at that time, the winning bidder, and this was a multiple property. So the winning bidders in this particular case would have to sign a purchase agreement prior to even leaving the auction site. And the purchase agreement was one that was actually used by uh, the Indiana Association of Realtors because the this particular auctioneer happened to also be a licensed realtor. So he used that auction uh, or that form. Now, <clears throat> when you convince the buyer that this is a good property, do not underestimate the fact that there are actually going to be costs to have this auction. And those costs should be gathered up front as part of your marketing so that you can, when you advise them, hey, here's a good deal, or here's a good property, or this market's going to make it a good deal, and we probably should try the auction method. You also want to make sure that you tell them, dude, there's also going to be some cost to this auction. Marketing is probably one of them. Not only marketing to the auction, but at the day of auction, there's going to be some cost too. I mean, you're going to have signage. 
you're going to have anything of uh, advertising, whether it's print, industrial media, whether it's going to be social media, uh, anything on the MLS. <coughs> I've been fighting that off for a long time. And of course, with that marketing also may come uh, professional photography. You may have an inspection that you have to pay for in advance. Uh, you may make that part of the marketing. Uh, material, you may have to pay some pre uh, listing title work. Typically, you won't have to do that. Maybe this is a different uh, situation. Whatever the costs are, you probably need to make sure you allude that to the seller so that he just doesn't have this big pie in the sky saying, I'm going to get money quick and I'm going to get a lot of bidders and it's going to run the bidder up. You also got to tell him that the, the other side of that is there's going to be costs that are involved with it well. Now, part of those costs or some of them or other marketing could be done in concert with your marketing by the auctioneer because the auctioneer obviously is going to uh, market his auction as well and as one of the houses in that auction or maybe it's the only house, he is going to market the property. So he may have some costs that he is going to burden. So you might want to discuss with him, hey, what are you doing versus what do you want me to do? Because maybe we shouldn't double dip and both pay for a website if you know, you're know you going to do it and I'm going to do it. So let's talk about what you're going to do as the auctioneer and what I'm going to be liable for, all right? So understanding the costs involved and making sure you communicate them to the seller is going to be very important, but knowing what portion of those costs, if any, are going to be uh, paid for by the auctioneer. Now, <clears throat> prior to the auction, almost all real property auctions and uh, require that the bidder um, register in advance. And when they register, most auctions have some kind of qualifications to kind of weed out some of the uh, looky-loos that just want to come in. For instance, when we, in that auction that I was had, and we went into the auction, we actually had to have a certified check for $5,000 made out to me. So it was from me, made out to me, because that was going to be the uh, earnest money if I won the bid. And literally, before they gave me my bid number, they asked to see that. And then... Because our auction was non-financeable, they wanted a letter of credit from my bank saying that, yes, I did, in fact, have enough money to buy this property if it was an auction. Now, that was kind of unique because a lot of times you just need the certified funds check and you need a letter stating that you have enough money to pay the deposit that day. Now, that deposit is the earnest money. And it can be as high as, you know, 3%, 5%. So you have to sometimes go in there with a certified funds or a letter of credit for maybe 20, 30 grand, depending on, you know, the value of the property. Now, there is a misconception that some buyers can't finance that it's cash. That's not true. There are a lot of auctions that happen where the buyers can get financing after the auction takes place. Now, it is a game of chicken because like in the auction that I attended, it specifically stated the auction date and then it specifically stated the closing date by and it was 30 days. So if you could get the financing in that 30 days and show up at closing with your lender then it was entirely possible for you to finance any of these auction properties. If you couldn't and you failed to close, we you were going to lose that $5,000 deposit, earnest money, that you paid in, and they would talk to or go seek out the next highest bidder to try and close the property. So you obviously can buy cash right there on the spot. 
You can also get a letter of credit from your lender against any other assets that you may have. And you can get a loan as long as you're pretty sure and willing to risk your earnest money that you're going to be able to get that loan in 30 days. All right. And all of this material or all of this information is going to be given to you by the auctioneer when you guys first sit down and talk about taking your client's property to auction. He is going to tell you, you know, we have this method. We could do it just to cash. We have a financing method. We could, in theory, set the closing 30 days, 45 days out to allow people to get financing. Um, and if they don't get the financing, that's when they lose their down money. All right. So that is something that you can establish with the auctioneer when you set up the initial auction. Now, there are some auction strategies for buyers that you need to be aware of. And the type of strategy that your buyer uses kind of depends on what type of auction it is. Is it the English style auction or is it more of the sealed bid auction, which in our business basically is almost what we call the highest and best, as we mentioned. In a sealed bid auction, the bidder establishes the value of the property meaning in his mind, he knows what the value is. The bidder's never going to bid over what he thinks the value is. Because if he does bid more than the value, then he's in a losing proposition out of the gate. All right? So that's one of the things you need to understand. Whatever the buyer thinks the value is, he's never going to bid over that. If he bids exactly his highest value, then he is never going to gain any equity, but he certainly won't lose any buying power. So if you think the house is worth 100 and you bid 100, you didn't gain any positive equity in that purchase as a buyer, but you certainly didn't overpay. Most of the time, what buyers hope to do is to bid less than the value that they have determined and in essence, giving themselves a positive gain in the transaction by saying, oh, it's a, I think it's worth 100, but if I bid 90 and win, I walk away from this deal with a positive gain. Now, the, the amount of gain that they earn kind of depends on what the others bid, because if the others bid over them, then obviously they don't win at all. So what I'm saying is if you think the value is 100 and you bid 90 thinking you're going to get a positive gain and all of a sudden another sealed bid bids 94, then our bidder at 90 gets nothing. So he doesn't realize any gain out of that auction. All right. So the strategy most likely for most bidders, and this is literally what we try and do on this highest and best is you hope that the bidder is going to bid at equal to their valuation, all right? Because they don't want to overbid. Now, if you're at an English auction where they stand in the yard and say, hey, give me this, give me that, give me this, then how the bidder establishes the value is there are statistics and there's a whole mathematical formula for this that is way too in-depth that we're going to get into here, uh, mainly because I don't really understand it, but uh, probably be boring as hell too. But literally, you can find a mathematical formula for your buyer's client, but here's the easy way to think about it. If you do a uh, statistical search for your client, for buyers, and you figure the average days on the market and the average sales price, you can actually use a mathematical formula to come up with some standard deviation. And that way you can tell your buyer, hey, all the houses in this neighborhood sell for 150 plus or minus eight or 10 grand. That's your deviation. All right. That's going to give your bidder client the idea of his opening bid. He's going to know then well, if I establish my value and I got a standard deviation of eight grand, maybe 142 is going to be my opening bid because I know that average is one at 50, but it varies either way. I could potentially break even 
at 142. But that would allow him to theoretically go to 158 as well because of the average with the deviation will determine the value there. How much value they gain actually isn't decided until the ultimate winner comes about. When the ultimate winner comes about and they figure out what price he's paying, then we can determine how much the positive gain is. All right. So there are two strategies that can be used. The, the English style strategy actually is a good strategy for you to use even in your normal buying situation. I mean, if you understand what average and standard deviation mean, you know that the average house is, you know, 150 in the neighborhood, but there is a deviation in plus or minus four or 5,000. That means it could be between 145 and 155. That allows your buyer to uh, enter his opening bid. All right. Now, when the auction closes and all the said and done, everything that was in the pre-auction instruction now comes to fruition. All of the terms now start kicking in. You know, if you've got that 30 day close, then the buyer needs to go out and start getting his financing and all of that. Make sure that if you've got a buyer client, that they understand the risk of not buying. I mean, the risk of not buying is not just, oh, I didn't buy the house. They are potentially going to be financially harmed because the money they had to give at the auction before they left for being the winning bidder will be forfeited. So they are and drastically could, you know, be in a position of losing money. And it's not like the conversations that we have uh, with returning earnest money in a normal conveyance of property. You know, the auctioneer is not going to auction and negotiate and go, yeah, OK, I see why you get it back because they'll make financing not a contingency. That's the one key. In those auctions where you have to close by a certain date, financing is typically not a contingency. So if you don't get the financing, you lose the down money and your buyer needs to be aware of that. All right. And then all the closing stuff is typically already covered and there's pre-listing -title, pre -listing title work that's done. So you've got all of that and now you just ultimately go to the closing, okay? So that's basically the process of how an auction works. Now we've got one more topic I wanna cover before we get out of here. So uh, hold on and we'll be right back.